this model so much, it does a beautiful job of progressively magnifying, yet again, the levels of what you're seeing when we look at the urinary system. So specifically inside of this one kidney here, we've got the whole kidney, obviously sectional view. You can see the outer cortex, the inner medulla, and you can see pyramids. If we take just one of these lobes here, that's what we're looking at here. In addition to that, if you look very closely, we've got all these little white dots, white dots, white dots, lines and lines and lines of them, okay? The same white dots that you see there are the same white dots that you see here is the same white dot that you see here. Of course, this is a giant one. So this is Bowman's capsule right here. So you see many of them here, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 of them here, and then just one of them there. So again, we're getting progressively closer and closer and closer. I want to describe what's happening on these models, not just anatomically, but by also looking at blood flow. So the easiest place to start is right here. We have blood flowing in, this is oxygenated, unfiltered blood coming in on the renal artery. From the renal artery, we go to a segmental artery. Segmental artery then branches to an interlobar artery. Interlobar artery arches around as an arcuate artery and then continues on into the cortex as an interlobular artery. So renal artery, segmental artery, interlobar artery, arcuate artery, and again, all in red, interlobular arteries. That same interlobar artery you see there is the interlobar artery that you see here in red. Interlobar artery arches around as the arcuate artery and then becomes an interlobular artery. These interlobular arteries then branch further into an afferent and efferent arterial. Now, sometimes you'll hear afferent is afferent and efferent is efferent, afferent and efferent. I'm going to say afferent and efferent so that you don't mix up the spelling. Afferent with an A, efferent with an E. But what you see here is the afferent vessel going into these structures, again, Bowman's capsules or the glomerular capsule. We call it the glomerular capsule because as you can see on this one and on this one, there is something called a glomerulus. A glomerulus is sort of a network of capillary beds inside of this capsule. So again, interlobar artery, arcuate artery, interlobular artery, these are all red by the way, and then afferent arterial going in, efferent arterial going out. Afferent arterial going in, there would be an efferent arterial going out. You see those everywhere here. What happens right here now is in the glomerulus, if we bring it here, is the process of filtration. So I'm gonna put a pause on what's moving through in the blood and I'm gonna to switch to something else now. So let's, we're following blood flow, okay? All the way here, all the way up here, Okay, but once we get to this point, let's pause blood and we'll pick back up with blood in a moment. So afferent into the glomerulus, efferent out. That's the same thing you're seeing here. Afferent into the glomerulus, efferent going out. Now, when we look at this afferent arterial, you'll notice it has a wide diameter to it. When you look at the efferent arterial, you'll notice it has a narrow diameter. So what happens when blood flows in to this capillary bed, but it has a narrow path going out? That means there's gonna be some buildup of pressure here. And that buildup of pressure is very important. There are a lot of physiological processes that happen at this point, but for now, what I want you to understand is there is pressure buildup inside here. What happens with this pressure is substances get pushed off or filtered off of this blood. Now on this side, you can see the podocytes. These are the cells on the outside. This one just shows the blood flowing inside of there. 
Again, there's really no difference between there. It's just that this has cells on the outside of it. This would be the blood flowing through. But nonetheless, that pressure pushes substances off into this capsular space. Remember, this is Bowman's capsule or the glomerular capsule. It's been cut open. And that substance that gets pushed off here is what we call filtrate because it has been filtered. That filtrate then starts moving down this tube. This is called the proximal convoluted tube. Let's go back here for a moment. This is a nephron, this white squiggly structure. This is another nephron. This is what we call a cortical nephron because the majority of it is out in the cortex. This is a juxtamedullary nephron because it is next to the medulla, juxtamedullary. Juxta means next to. And you see a nice deep long loop down here. Okay. So what happens is the fluid that gets pushed off here starts traveling all the way down this tube. This is what we call the proximal convoluted tubule. Remember, proximal is closer to the attachment point. Distal is further from the attachment point. Convoluted means twisted. So it's a proximal convoluted tubule. And then we have a descending limb of the nephron loop. We have an ascending limb of the nephron loop. This is sometimes called the loop of Henle. Descending limb, ascending limb. Then a distal convoluted tubule, which leads into a collecting duct. Same thing over here. Again, if you follow blood, interlobar artery, arcuate artery, interlobular artery, afferent arterial into the glomerulus and efferent arterial out. And what happens at the glomerulus right here? Filtration. Filtration pushes substances off of the blood here. Remember, wide diameter going in, narrow diameter coming out. So you're going to get a backup, almost like a traffic jam. And it pushes, pushes, pushes substances into this capsular space, which becomes tubular fluid because these look like tubes, don't they? So that tubular fluid or that filtrate moves through the proximal convoluted tubule, down the descending limb of the loop of Henle, the ascending limb to the distal convoluted tubule. By the way, this distal convoluted tubule that you see right here is the same distal convoluted tubule that's passing by here. And while we're at it, I might as well add this region right here. This structure is called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. It's made up of the macula densa, and it's made up of the juxtaglomerular cells. Macula densa, juxtaglomerular cells. This is part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. From this distal convoluted tubule, again, that you see right here, here's the other one here. And keep in mind, there would be one on each one of these. You'd have hundreds of thousands of them, more even, those go all the way down the collecting duct. And we basically have urine at this point traveling down the collecting duct. You can see where the others would eventually attach to, and it gets squirted out the papilla. That's what happens here. Urine gets squirted out the papilla into the minor calyx, the major calyx, the renal pelvis, and then eventually down the ureter to the urinary bladder. Now, if we pick back up on the blood, that's the process of filtration. So we've cleaned out our blood, but look at how nice this model is. They show it's still red here. We haven't switched from red to blue. So now we switch from red to blue at these, we call them peritubular capillaries. We call them peritubular capillaries because peri means around. Peritubular around the tubes. You can imagine the nephrons as the tubes. So these are cortical capillary plexi, right? Uh, plexus is a, a braid or a network. So this is the, the cortical capillary plexus. This is what we call the vasorecta, right? The straight vessels here. But these are examples of peritubular capillaries. And this again is where you'll see a switch from red to blue. Now what do we have? We pick up on the same pathway and we work our way backwards. These are interlobular veins. Those meet up with the blue, I'm on blue now. These are the blue arcuate veins. Not sure how well you can see the blue vessel right here. This is an interlobar vein. So the same thing that you're seeing here. Interlobular vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, segmental vein, and then in blue, the renal vein. And that's where 
filtered but deoxygenated blood is going to go back out into general circulation. Mm -hmm.